was being cut. No. Okay. Mm. Oh. All right, we will call our meeting to order. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first order of business is the approval of the minutes from May 2nd. Did everybody read the minutes? Yes. yes. Any comments? Um, did We had a discussion about the blizzard bags, and then did we, didn't we take a vote about, or we agreed that you would pilot, or I there was you, a request just, to us. I think you just sort of um, gave us a green light to do more okay. research on it, and okay. we're going to bring back a proposal or some okay. more information in June. Okay. So I, that kind of that didn't get in into the minutes that school committee had actually been requested to give approval about something. Um, so I didn't know whether we wanted to document that. Yeah, maybe we should say like there was, yeah, some kind of consensus from it, the school committee. That, yeah, that they supported yeah. that we supported it or something. That was the only comment I had. Yeah, they support us like moving forward or something exactly. like that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 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 So should we approve them with the amendment? Yeah. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, reports for the school committee. Dr. Antonucci. Yeah, so I just have a very brief report. Um, today, um, I just want to mention Jim Dunnerman and I um, toured the high school with uh, the new Duxbury Clipper editor, Matt, Matthew Nowler. I just really wanted to introduce Matthew, if, if you haven't met him. But um, also just to acknowledge, the, A, he gave us a lot of his time today. And Jim and I gave him the, the grand tour of the uh, DHS uh, Middle, in the middle school complex, but just also to acknowledge that he's very interested and willing to cover um, all the great things that are happening in our schools every day. So we're trying to work with him to feed him as much information as possible. So thank you, Matthew, publicly. Um, so then, in the subject of uh, kind of journalism and media, just FYI, I did an interview yesterday on PAC TV. Good. I went to the studios on PAC TV and um, had an opportunity to share kind of my thoughts on a number of school related issues. Um, talked about a lot of the personnel changes that have happened this year. I focus a lot on the budget uh, and the budget process, and sort of my uh, goal to advocate for, quite frankly, more resources for the for the school system. Um, I also touched upon our technology review and um, talked about the sort of the crossroads we're in. You know, just looking at next steps after our technology review and how it relates to our one-to-one -one program. And I just wanted to tell you I did it, but also um, I just think every opportunity we have to speak directly. Mm -hmm. to our stakeholders is um, very helpful. And so I was, I was thrilled to do it, and I was grateful that they gave me that opportunity to do it. I forget the name of the segment. It's school something, but it's a new segment that they're running, and so I happen to be the first guest on that, on that segment. So Great. when it comes out, I'll see what it, see what it looks like, and I'll send it along. Um, <laughs> okay. But again, it was just the, again, the direct messaging to me is, yeah. is huge. Uh, it's just really important. So to the extent that we can expand on that in the future, I'd like to do that. And then finally, I just mentioned to you in April, actually, that we had commenced custodial negotiations. Um, our team is um, 
me, Brian Cherry, the director of facilities, and Jerry Panuchak, um, our HR director. And um, I'm just happy to report that we've actually uh, reached a tentative agreement with the union. We're in the process of putting together an MOU, and at some point I'll be bringing it, at some point soon I hope, bring it forward to the school committee for ratification. But it was a great process. Uh, details forthcoming, but I just want to let you know that we commenced and finished in a pretty efficient um, and expedient way. Great. That's it. Awesome. Um, I realized I skipped public comment. Is anybody here to comment from the public? No? Okay. I didn't think so. But. All right. Um, Tim. Well, good evening, all. Good evening. I'm going to demonstrate uh, self-regulation, which is a social-emotional <laughs> learning skill, <laughs> and say that at the last meeting, I took up far too much of your time. So I'm only going to comment about one thing tonight. And the one thing is, uh, last week, Ms. Moser and I both attended the district curriculum committee meeting. Uh, and I have to give a shout out to the four students who were part of that meeting. They were articulate, they were knowledgeable, they were not intimidated by adult presence. They were absolutely phenomenal. And it was right in their wheelhouse to talk about technology and technology in the classroom and its use and its purpose and so forth. But I don't know how you felt, Shannon, but I, I, I thought that, first of all, I thought the meeting went well, but I also, because it kind of serves as our next step after the technology review, the literacy review that we did this year, um, but the, the students were phenomenal. Yeah, no, I com completely agree. That's great. That's and they for new students who will continue to next year? All, all will be on the committee next year, correct. Excellent. Great. Thank you. All right, David is not he here. He's not here today. So, no business, nothing. There'll be some business yep. business in the, in the voting. Yeah. yeah, okay. I can cover that. Um, no student reps. So that leaves me, and I don't really have a lot either. Um, I did, well, I will, I'll, I'll be a student rep for a minute um, and let you know the boys lacrosse team won this afternoon. I just read the tweet, nine to seven against Hingham, and the girls tennis team won again. So I think they're on a roll. And then the Clipper today had three students who have signed their national letters of intent. Um, Abby Hickey, who's going to St. Mike's for field hockey. Will Bittrick, who comes from a running dynasty, both his older sisters were big runners, he's going to go to Bryant. And Kate Reynolds is going to Princeton for rowing. And I can't say enough about the rowing program here. Kids have just, it's grown exponentially, and we are sending kids left and right to school for rowing, whether they walk on or are, um, I can't say drafted, but recruited. Thank you. <laughs> So that's the student rep news. And then the only other um, item I had was I was um, on the CPAC, which, which is a Special Education Parent Advisory Council liaison, and I attended my first meeting Monday night. Um, and it was really interesting for me to come as a newcomer, and there were a lot of parents there. And um, Jim Donovan presented, and his angle, of course, is the high school, and he talked about um, language-based classrooms, um, inclusion classrooms, and co-taught classrooms, and sort of the difference between them, which was really interesting, and it was some clarification for me. Um, and my question was, I would think that a majority of the classes at the high school at this point would be inclusion, because it doesn't matter what level, whether it's honors or college or AP, um, and, and he agreed. He said it's it's a good number, have inclusion. So that that's great news. All of our students are being serviced. So um, I look forward to attending those meetings through the end of this year and all next year. And that's all I have. So da, 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 da. we have school improvement plans 2017-2018 from Alden and Chandler. Thank you both okay. for coming. Thank you, Mrs. Whitaker, <laughs> Mrs. Wiesa. Of course. It's my favorite time of the year. Yes. <laughs> do you want to do it all at once? Do you want to do the improvement plan first, then we'll do the handbooks? And... That's what we were thinking. Okay, yes. perfect. So I'll start with Chandler. Okay. Um, so basically, I was just going to go through and highlight some of the areas um, that I was most excited about this year, and then you can follow up with any questions you have about any of it. Um, so in our first goal, we, where we were talking about giving academics a higher status, I really wanted to talk about the social-emotional piece of that goal. Um, our goal this year was really to enhance our social-emotional outlook at Chandler. So 
We started with our green initiative as we've had for the past few years and just really wanted to enhance that for teachers and for kids and for families. So um, we have introduced Calm Classroom as the whole district has. We've been doing it um, throughout the school day for all kids. So we start Monday mornings with our school adjustment counselor, Amy Burns. She presents on the um, morning announcements and just starts the week off calmly for all of our students. And central office. Yeah, yes, everybody, <laughs> all of us. <laughs> yep. um, we're also doing it at the end of lunch sometimes. Um, either myself or Mrs. McNeil will go in and sort of transition. It's a nice way to transition the kids back into the classroom because you know we have recess now before lunch. So they do tend to come into the cafeteria calmer than in previous years, but then you know, after lunch is over and we're cleaning up and they're transitioning back into the classroom, we're finding that the calm classroom is really helping make that transition more calm as well. PE teachers are using calm classroom at the end of their time every time, which they're finding is a, also a great way to transition the kids back into their academics. And throughout the days, the throughout the day, the teachers are using it um, in their classrooms for various transitions and just periods of time when they feel like the kids could use a little bit of just centering and breathing and mindfulness. So it's it's been a really nice addition. Um, so speaking of going back to our green initiative, just quickly, we have created a Google site and I have to give uh, Mrs. McNeil, our assistant principal, all the credit for this. She's created a Google site which is really a resource page for our teachers um, because the green initiative is really student friendly language so it's really kid centered it's great friend to all and respect and things that kids can understand but it's important for us to realize that behind that there's a lot of other social competencies that we're really trying to teach as dr farmer just referenced before so you know when we're talking about great friend to all we're really talking about being able to um, have self-awareness and relationship skills and some of those more in-depth social competencies that the kids don't realize they're learning but that we as adults need to be aware that we're explicitly teaching those things so this page has um, books and videos and lesson plans that go with each of those social competencies um, any questions about that before I move on to my next goal? Well, I just wondered if um, you'd had any feedback from either staff or parents around impact. You know, ha has their experience of teaching or the experience in the classroom changed as a result of these strategies? Absolutely. So the, um, the website that we've launched this year hasn't been fully rolled out to the entire staff. We've been really working on it with the green team. We um, showed it to our school council and got their feedback, both sure. from parents and teachers. And then the plan is to really fully implement these strategies, you know, the whole, all the lesson plans and the videos and the resources mm -hmm. book lists in the fall yeah. as part of our um, rollout. But Calm Classroom for sure has had a positive impact. Um, teachers are saying that kids are coming back to class after PE much more easily transitioning back into right. academics. They're using, they love using it as a strategy during the school day to just take a break. Great. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely having an impact. Oh good. Yeah. Can I interrupt? And we have yeah, parents at Alden that come in, bring their children in late so they can take part of the calm classroom that happens at 7.45 <laughs> in the lobby. <laughs> I look out and they're like, oh, you just made my day. Uh -huh. And then they continue. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Many okay, parents have great. even, um, commented that kids are doing it to them before bed at night. Nice. You know, <laughs> running their own calm classroom exercises mm. with their family. <laughs> A number of people have actually said that to me. So it's oh, great. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, so for our second goal, I really wanted to just talk about our balanced literacy because that, that was our big push this year. In the fall, we'll be fully implementing Reader's Workshop and Balanced Literacy approach to teaching reading and um, this year was really intense professional development for all teachers so that everybody is ready to roll in the fall. Um, 
we're really grateful to the Duxbury Education Foundation for providing us with the grant that's given us our new guided reading library, which we'll be putting into place this summer, because really the focus of our balanced literacy is about appropriate book choices for all kids and having enough choice so that kids can choose just right books for themselves, whether based on interest or level, and so that teachers can choose appropriate books for kids based on you know the needs that they see in the classroom. So um, that is, that's been fantastic with our professional development through um, Teaching and Learning Alliance this year. Tomorrow is actually, we're working on our plan for summer so that we can align our literacy instruction so that everybody's ready to go with their first unit of instruction in September. Um, goal three. We have, um, this is something that we've been talking about for the last couple of years, providing global collaboration opportunities for our students. We, this is something that we'll need to continue to explore every year and expand. Um, this year we participated in Global Read Aloud and Hour of Code, and then different classrooms had participated in individual things. Um, I know one second grade classroom did a Valentine swap with um, kids from other countries electronically. Um, so I think you know this is something that will just continue to grow and build upon each year. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to talk about our partnership in the with community organizations, especially the Duxbury Senior Center this year. We started off the year with the Kindness Rock project, and you probably saw that other places around Duxbury were participating in this with the Senior Center. And the Senior Center was so great, they provided us with about 650 plus golden rocks. And every single student and every single adult in the building created a kindness rock. And we had an assembly all around um, Great Friend to All, which is our G in green, and to kick off the year, and our theme was really kindness is golden. And so we talked about you know, what that means throughout the year, and then the kids and teachers all placed their kindness rocks around the school. So they're in the hallways, they're out in the front garden, they're in the um, courtyard, around the pond, and it was just a really positive message and a great way to start the year. So that was a um, wonderful collaboration with the Senior Center that we were able to, to do. There's a reason she went first, because I can say ditto, ditto, <laughs> ditto, ditto. So I'll, um, at Alden, um, the social-emotional learning was huge. We do um, Calm Classroom, and Aaron said it as eloquently as I would, as far as when we do it and how the students react to it. And so that is something that we absolutely will continue next year. Um, Mr. E, the assistant principal, sends out weekly podcasts that focus on social emotional learning and dealing with the anxious child. So that's just another way for our teachers to um, get professional development, if you will. He and Mrs. Jones, the adjustment counselor, will be attending a seminar, thanks to um, Dr. A Farmer in Lexington, um, to talk with other schools about what else they're doing. I feel like we have now an understanding and a foundation, but we have so much more to learn and do, and so we're excited about that. So that was a big focus as far as um, our one of my goals this year. Another area that I want to talk about, we had the Promote One School, One Book. We did What Do You Do With an Idea, and that's how we kicked off the year and had students decide what they could, what could you do. And so we had light bulbs all over the building with ideas, and next year we are currently working on um, each grade is going to do a book, um, and it's going to be a read aloud. It's going to what kicks off our Reader's Workshop launch unit for September, so we're working it in with um, our balanced literacy and I met with um, the reading specialist today to design what we you know how it's going to look next year as far as making it a school-wide everybody you know for the first day or this actually it's the second day 130 to 145 every single person in every single class will be reading that book even during gym or whatever you know at the beginning of the year and so the students see the importance of reading um, 
which leads right into when we talked about Reader's Workshop um, for my second goal in balanced literacy. I, you know, everything in education goes in cycles. And it's almost embarrassing for me to say, but I have never, since I've been in education, watched the love of reading like I did this year. There are teachers that will tell you that their kids have read over 200 books in a classroom. I go walk into a classroom and the kids are reading. They're reading down the hallway. It's like I don't think I've ever said, can you put that book away? I'm trying to talk. <laughs> it's just never happened, and it is happening. Reader's Workshop, you know, just to give you a two-second, they can choose what they want to read. It's not putting an anthology in front of them and having them read about soccer, and they have no desire to read about. It's teaching them a skill and letting them pick up a book. And so the libraries that we have for the, the you know, over the course of this year, the new materials that we have received has been incredible as well as the, um, the professional development we have received. So it, you know, thank the district for the amount of money that has been invested in the professional development, but to watch the kids is to me, I'm, I, I have more emails from parents that say their kids love reading than I have anything else this year. It was a huge shift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. And so it's, I, I just feel, I'm so thrilled with it. And next year we're going to continue with that. And we're finding ways to do it community-wise. Uh, you know, as far mm -hmm. as bringing in, we had, when our senior, senior citizens, I'm getting way off track here, they will come in, but they want to read in the passport. The kids can't wait to tell them what now, what countries they're reading about. There's lots of um, just conversation about reading. And, I, and, and just while we're on the topic, your PTA has done an amazing job with author visits. Incredible. Just incredible. Um, and so that kind of excitement around reading and understanding how books are written and characters, it's really, really admirable. So thank you. I, I thank have you goosebumps. I can't explain to you. And you know, we all know how important reading is. Yeah. Um, the kids that just don't like to read, and I'm getting notes that saying, what are you doing? And the teachers have just, it's, it's incredible. Great. Well, and Karen, what I also love is the growth just to see how, um, like with Mae, just how she is contextualizing and just her brain growth from mm -hmm. reading and what they're being asked to extract from what they're reading, regardless of the level, on mm -hmm. their own level or whatever the topic is. I've really seen a, a huge growth this year, and I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. Like just the maturity even right. from the literacy. Right. It's impressive. Yes. Our libraries are incredible. And they're doing a great job, the teachers are as well as the students, picking out what's, what good literature is and just trying to find those skills in something that interests them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I, I was going to say, can we, keep their, can we keep phones out of their hands another <laughs> couple of years? Because sadly, I mean, as they get yeah. older, they don't read, uh, even uh, if they have great love of reading. Yeah. And you, do, you look at the demographics and the data on, on college age, you know, higher education, kids will read and they'll take shortcuts because they're so readily available. They don't read for, you know, knowledge and or enjoyment, whereas mm -hmm. they do in your two schools. Yeah. So, you know, this is this is really a cha challenge and a challenge to parents as well as how c they, they have the yearning to read, but how can we keep it from, mm -hmm. you know, um, passing by the wayside as right. they get older. Right. So, but that's like, super exciting. It is very exciting. We did a reading challenge for like, um, what's the basketball? Um, March Madness. March Madness. And had, it was incredible. I couldn't think. It was <laughs> incredible. And they had to read the books and they voted against the books. And, you know, the Lemonade War won, yeah. of course, because, you know, the author was here. But the kids got so excited. Um, it, it, it's, yeah, okay. Um, goal three, oh, uh, 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 different global experiences. The makerspace, I know you, at the beginning of the year, you were able to visit it. The students love it. I, you know, put a book in their hand and go in there, and we're all set. You know, the days, you know, problem solving in there um, and doing science experiments and just many different problem solving um, activities, they have really 
it's a different atmosphere when they walk in. It's not just, you know, when you think you go and you see all these arts and crafts types of things. They're really, they can articulate what they're doing, um, which is really great. So that space has been very much utilized and will continue to be utilized. And, you know, I have to take the opportunity to thank the parents. I put an email out and say we need you know, wrapping paper, empty wrapping paper rolls, and I have more than I can store. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, it's it's supported. So that's that's awesome. And strengthen the community and the uh, communication and the partnerships with the community. We continue to do that. We've had more senior volunteers in our passport program. We had um, two fourth grade classes interview seniors in town to write their biographies as opposed to their parents or, um, you know, their grandparents. So that was great. And one thing that I didn't put on here is we did a big kindness project for the police department and the students made goodie bags that were incredible. And they came in and um, the students presented that to them and talked about the importance of community. And it was I think it was very well received by, by everybody. So I don't want to take up any more time. But any questions? Lots happening, and that's, I hopefully you read the newsletter that, you know, you get every other week so you can kind of see what happens. Yeah. At, I was uh, just going to, um, we've, we've talked about reading because it's so exciting, but um, science is an area you both mentioned, and so I wondered how you're getting along, how far you've progressed in terms of aligning, <coughs> excuse me, aligning the curriculum and moving. Um, uh, you, you talked about transitioning the physics physical science to the new frameworks? So we did, um, this so year we did transition the new physical science frameworks for K through two. Right, and, okay. Um, and, and now we have purchased the, or okay. we are, will be purchasing, right. the Elevate Science online okay. um, access for teachers and students as well as the leveled readers. Right. And part of our summer work this year for um, three members of each grade level will be to <laughs> align those um, resources with our literacy resources, so okay. that we can embed some of the some of the literature sure. side of it, and then we'll be building on what sort of experiments and labs do we want to do um, on top of that? Yeah, yeah, that's, so that's exactly our next step. Is that it, we're yeah, we've purchased thing. the Elevate okay. science materials, and so teachers are currently using them. But we will be working this summer um, aligning the curriculum. We have switched to the physical. Um, standard, so right. we're right in the same place. Okay. And I think the, what's great is when we purchase classroom libraries, we look at nonfiction to match up right. because we've got to we teach it together. Sure. And you feel like you have the resources to support all that. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Good. Yeah, we do. Okay. I'm so happy the science curriculum has improved over the years. I don't know if you remember Peter with our oldest. Every year it was like cough into your sleeve, you know, it was all about like germs and how to be healthy and there was <laughs> nothing else in the curriculum no, for years, yeah. so, yeah, well, it's great. It's fun walking in and seeing a lot of different experiments. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't an uncommon one. Yeah, there was so much focus for years on the MCAS, math and science, I mean, excuse me, math and English. ELA, that I think a lot of the priority for science kind of got pushed in the background. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's, it's awesome to see now, but. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. And the kids love science. They do, love, and it's hands-on, and yes. of course, and you can get them outside and do experiments. And, yeah, and then they switch classrooms sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's great. We were in a science class the other day. Ms. Yes. And I yes, on static learned about static electricity. I think I won. <laughs> yes, I won. Yeah. With my hair, yeah, with a, the blue. It was a competition, right? I think yeah. I won. Yeah, yeah. I know, I think I won. <laughs> How come the video was of only Mrs. Whitaker? I know, I know, I know. It's because I, I took video. You. That's right. <laughs> it was great though. The kids were, you know, yeah. totally into it, and oh, yeah. it really was. Um, I don't know. It was interesting. But it was inquiry, right? Basically, mm -hmm. there was no answer, right? They were they right. were exploring and mm -hmm. trying to figure out, and asking questions. Great. It was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Nice. It's fun. All right. Um, so let's do handbooks. Um, sure. go first, so um, really, I mean, I have four changes. Yep. Do you have any questions <laughs> about that? <laughs> <laughs> what time's lunch? <laughs> no. No? Looks good. I just okay. note, um, you changed the wording. This is very picky, but 
You changed the wording about volunteers from attending some training to participating. I'll tell you why. <laughs> because we have transitioned our volunteer orientation to be online. Oh, okay. So, oh. so parents don't actually have to come to school right. physically mm -hmm. to attend. So okay. they're participating in, in it online and okay. then giving us and then signing off on it. Great. That's why. So the only thing I would point out is when you go to your volunteer, there's a volunteer guidance on, on the main web page for Chandler. If you want to be a volunteer, click here. And it talks about attending training. So okay, so I'll make sure that wording is change changed that. too. Thank you. Yeah, that was the only thing, um, which is very picky, but I thought I'd just no, thank you. That's good. That's good catch. <laughs> Good? Mm -hmm. All right. Karen? And I have three changes of the times, how often we meet. The homework guide is outdated and um, don't park in the right travel lane. Not sure why I have to say that and write it, but I do. <laughs> well, you put the orange cones up, right? So. No, this is the one that goes all around the school. Oh. You know, like the pickup, the right travel? Oh, like I do, because we all made fun of one of the moms who was parked there when all the high school moms and yeah trying to get nice. I don't know nice <laughs> ever do that. It, yeah and it was like yeah we saw you blocking everyone and I don't know who else would ever do that <laughs> <laughs> and she's sitting in my office and we're watching I'm like there's another car parked there but there's no way to park so when you have an event or I, un I understand but it is a travel lane and I just at least need to get it out there Thanks. <laughs> Not part of the travel lane. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> well, yeah. I noticed um, this is, again, a picky thing. Sure. School council. You both have school council meeting pretty much every other month, I think, on, on, on your websites. But mm -hmm. there's somewhere in your, in your handbooks about school council meeting every month. Right. This That's is changed. Change. That's my yes. change. You change it, but if you change it on... The school council page of the web of your website. Okay. Because it still says something about meeting, meeting every, every month. Great. So just check for that because you're not obliged to meet every month. I mean, if you look at the law, you're right. not obliged. So we um, used to, and yes. then we switched to yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah. So website, it still says it. Great. Thank I think, you. I think that's where I saw it. But. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you Thank you both. Thank Thanks. you. You're welcome to go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, we have the interface referral service update on funding. Yeah. So I, I, yep. I, you have a packet of materials about this thing called interface, um, <laughs> uh, but I, I just, I just put a few slides together okay. just as a point of reference, uh, more than anything. So. Here's why we're talking about, the, well, I'll get to why we're talking about this tonight, but Interface is a, um, is a referral service for um, families uh, looking to access the mental health provider system. Um, we currently have that, we currently have it in Duxbury. I'll talk a little bit about the history. And as it says here, the, you know, the helpline assists callers by gathering information about mental health concern, and then they use their database of providers to connect the caller to mental health professionals. <coughs> Which, if you talk to anybody who's trying to access mental health services, it's a very challenge, very challenging thing to navigate. So, Interface um, helps that, and it's staffed by licensed mental health professionals. It's owned and operated by um, William James College. I think they used to be called the Mass. It was a Mass College of School Psychologists, yeah. but they're rebranded to William James. Uh, they're they're new. So that's what interface is, it's just, it, it, it's what it is, it's a referral service. Um, this is from their marketing materials, but, you know, there's a great success with the, with the program. They describe it, you know, in communities as, as it becoming a mental health touch point. Um, it provides referral support, as I described to the families, but it also can be a resource for schools and the community as we're navigating, as we're navigating the system as well. Um, and just a couple other sort of bullets about what it is. And this is the key thing here. It's just to the extent that we can facilitate better and more easy access to these mental health providers, the better off the families will be. I mean, it's, it's, sort, of that, it's sort of that simple of a concept. Um, Duxbury has been part of a group of South Shore communities 
that has been getting the interface referral service paid for um, out of the state budget. I'm not really sure how this happened, um, but there was an earmark, uh, they call it an earmark in the state budget, that was um, secured by you know, Rep Cantwell and, and Senator O'Connor. So for the last three years, these communities, Duxbury included, have been getting the service for free. I think there's 40 plus communities in the, in the Commonwealth that use Interface. Everybody else pays, so I'm not really sure how the South Shore did it, it was wonderful. It, yeah. I think, uh, got, remembering back to early Duxbury fax meetings, I think it had to do with the um, intensity of mental health and substance abuse needs in yeah. those communities. So they were able to argue to earmark and try and target this particular yeah. area of the state. Yeah, because it's funny, if you look at the list, if you go on the website and you look at the list of communities, it lists all its communities, and then it's like South Shore. Yeah. And it's really kind of interesting, you know, and this is because of this work. That's right. So it's been incredible, and, um, you know, I don't know how up to date this data is, but they said that since that time, there's been over 1,500 uh, or approximately 1,500 mental health referrals. And if you think about that being you know, a referral for a family and the, the potential of how many people that could impact is it's really a remarkable number. Here's, a, here's the punchline though, is that last winter, um, I'm not really sure about the mechanics of the state budget, but the funding for Interface effectively got pulled. And so the, the free service to these towns stopped. Um, so it's, we've, been on, we've been on hold for several months now. Recently, through a lot of lobbying and a lot of, a lot of work from Senator O'Connor um, and several other state senators and reps, we learned recently that funding is going to be restored for one year, or there's another earmark, it's gonna be restored for one year beginning this July. But there's a, there's a catch or a caveat, which is, you know, they're worried about sustainability, right? It's not something that they can afford to have in the state budget in perpetuity. So what they're saying is, okay, we'll get the, get the funding and the service back for a year to these self short communities but they're asking communities who are interested that to get the, uh, in order to get that one year free, that you need to sign a contract for the second year, in, in theory, sure. in the future, um, at the full cost of the service, and, the, and it's $12,500 per year. Uh, I can tell you my former district, we paid that $12,500, and that's what everybody else pays. Um, so it's, it's a little, um, you know, it's wonderful news, uh, but it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a budgetary question, and I'll talk more about that right now. So on Friday, Senator O'Connor is hosting an informational meeting for all these South Shore communities who have been heavily advertising and kind of promoting this meeting. Um, I, I personally have a conflict, but our administration will be in attendance. Jim Donovan and, and uh, Lisa Dabulski are going to be there just to learn more about it. We kind of have the information. It is what it is. Right. Um, but we're going to go and, and just make sure we have all the details. But our decision is going to be this, is do we enter into this contract? Right, um, which would obligate us to fund this 12500 in a future budget, maybe in the FY20 budget. Um, I think it's an incredible resource. Um, I think it should be a top priority, especially as it relates to mental health and social emotional learning. I mean, this is a, it's, a, it's an incredible service, um, but nonetheless, it, is a, it, is, it does have an impact on the budget, a future impact. Um, I will say this, I had a great conversation with the town administrator yesterday, and. Uh, this is not just a school resource, it's tr it truly is a community resource, and there are several communities throughout the Commonwealth that split the cost between, for example, the school department and maybe another town department. Um, Randy definitely is, in is, is interested in having further conversations about it, was very, very open-minded um, about potentially splitting the cost. I know the details of that, you know, we'll have to see, but I think we need to go into this potentially without, without that commitment, knowing that we might be obligated at some mm -hmm. point to, to spend 12, 1,500 if we decide to do it. But we kind of, I don't know the exact timing, we'll know more Friday, but I just kind of wanted to let you know it's happening. Um, it is definitely a, a resource for the community that I think is important, um, but it's also, it's an expense. Yeah. Um, we look, we, are, we have, we're trying to get some hard, harder data on how many families in Duxbury have used it. It seems like in the last two years, the number is, is uh, 60 plus families. We're not sure that, we're not sure when they've occurred, right? So I'm assuming, and I don't have this information, and I may not be able to get it, I'm assuming that as a program becomes more known, because we, we provide information on Interface um, to dozens upon dozens of families um, in, in the school when we can, mm -hmm. depending on the context and depending on the meeting we provide. So I'm assuming that 
we're getting more referrals as the program becomes more widely known and mature, maybe. But I, I don't have a I don't have a specific number for you. Okay. So that's it. I mean, that's that is that's where we are. Well, certainly Duxbury Fats has. They had um, somebody come and speak a couple, maybe 18 months ago from William James to talk about the service and um, the police who. Um, are participating in Duxbury Fax meetings, they use the service as well. So, um, it, and the Interfaith Council in Duxbury might also be interested yeah. in participating. <clears throat> so, those would be the organizations who might have the greatest interest within the community <coughs> in kind of partnering with us. Yeah. Yep, I will definitely reach out. Senior center too. Senior center. Yeah. Senior center. So, so probably fall under. Sure. They might wonder if they fall under the town of budget. Maybe not. You know, John. I, um, just you know, my thought on this is, and and I wouldn't say this lightly, but this is just a case where you just have to find the money if necessary. You know, yeah. um, and this is also a case where we don't want our school leadership investing extensive time and effort to find $12,500 because we have a mental health epidemic. I'm sure the research would suggest um, intervention earlier rather than later is beneficial. So the return to our community of an investment in providing mental health access and resources um, that are community-wide, not just school-wide, it's just one of those we just have to get it done and we shouldn't devote a lot of time talking about it, on um, my view. Um, but it is an example, and I think when people have a nostalgic view of, well, the funding from 10 or 20 years ago for our school systems was just fine, why can't we do that going forward? It's just another example of the increasing responsibilities, the increasing burdens, um, some mandated, some not, that are on our schools and the complexity of the role of uh, public education is expanding, it's not decreasing. So uh, I think this is just an example, I hate to devote too much time, it, have to, it has to happen, you yeah. know. Yeah. That's what I think yeah. about it. I'm not worried about the amount, Peter, to your point. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I just, in the spirit of full transparency, it's just <clears throat> funny to be talking about the future obligation. So even sure. though it's a small right. amount, relatively small amount, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not diminishing the 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 dollars. Right. They're meaningful, and but this is another squeeze on our operating resources. That is just something we just have to find a way to get done because of the impact and the need of our our families and our students. Totally agree. And if you look, if you say sixty families have used it so far, you're talking two hundred bucks a family, and mm -hmm. I mean that to get mental health services is so difficult. And parents don't know where to look. And it's, you know, it could be for any reason. We've got so much anxiety, depression, we've got eating disorders, we've got, you know, you name it. And parents don't know who to turn to. So. William James has done a nice job. In your, in your packet, there's some statistics about their success rate of mm -hmm. connecting families, and it's just exponentially greater with the referral service than not. You know, mm -hmm. I, I forget what the term is, I don't know if it's closure rate or so, some, some, mm -hmm. some term, um, but it's, it works. And they're the best. I mean, they're the gold standard in the in the mental health field right now. All right. Great. That's it, yeah. really. Super. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Sure. All right. Action items. We need to vote to approve those elementary handbooks. So should we do them one at a time? Mm, sure. That's okay. Vote to approve. Um, can I have a motion to approve the Chandler handbook? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion to approve the Alden handbook changes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. And then we have a vote to approve the um, music trip to Chicago that is taking place next year. I love that they got it in already. Yeah, March 6th to 9th, 2019. Yeah. Trip to Chicago is an exchange. For the um, Chicago area high school, that sounds wonderful. Any discussion? So, uh, just a question. That sounds um, really exciting. Have we done it before? And when we say we have an exchange, does that mean the following year Chicago will come and uh, be with us, or is it going to happen in 
uh, next year? Do you just have? So you know, Peter, I don't know the answer to that question. I can okay. I can uh, text Jim or something if you if we want to know, but I don't know the answer to that yeah, question. Yeah, no, it sounds yeah. it sounds um, wonderful. It's not been part of the regular rotation. It seems in terms mm. of yeah, it seems um, new programs. Um, it, to, to engage Northwestern University mm. in it looks really exciting. So, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm highly supportive without knowing all the details. Um, we can, we can, if you want, if we want to get more details, we can do that too. It's yeah, it's not. I don't, I don't think yeah. it's necessary, but it's up to the other school committee members. My only, um, yeah, it sounded fantastic. I just wondered whether um, the the music trips. It, uh, it's, uh, I don't want to um, criticize the music department at all because they do a fantastic job at, at um, giving the, the students opportunities to play in all sorts of kind of contexts and venues. Um, but I just wonder whether we've had any feedback from parents over the years that each year there's a music trip, the cost is a is that a burden? Because right. this trip it's fifteen hundred dollars. Right, it's not a small amount. And I thought, well, considering that we have. Berkeley and uh, New England Conservatory and uh, Juilliard in New York, I wondered whether there were other opportunities that students could access that might not be quite such a large amount of money to participate in. Um, yeah, I can, um, so that would be just the question. I'm seeing if I have any information from Bob Judge who I will. We want to just look into that and maybe. Yeah, because you know the Disney trip, trip is over a thousand dollars, and and um, Carnegie Hall. I don't remember what that was, but it, I just don't want parents to feel like if their if their child wants to participate fully in the program that they've got to shell out over a thousand dollars on some trip each year, um, in addition to all the other things they're shelling money out for. And this is 140 students. Yeah, and it doesn't trip. say the transportation. Just as commercial carrier, carrier, commercial carrier, yeah. yeah. To be determined, yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, I, I, I did talk to one parent who had three students attend uh, Carnegie Hall, mm. and I think the that price was over $1,500 per student. Yeah. Um, I think the caliber of those mm -hmm. programs have been so strong that the the context of spending just under five thousand dollars to send three children was like, oh my gosh, I hope I don't have to do this every year. But it was, it was incredible. Of course, you know, there's so a balance. I, yeah. I think it's, um, it's it's worth um, it's um, it's worth noting. But I think again, when you put in context. Um, what our uh, student athletes' families invest in mm -hmm. sports-related um, camps, uh, full-season training, off-season training, et cetera, uh, strength and conditioning. Um, it doesn't seem to be out of line, you know, and I think the enrichment for our students, one, the bonding experiences are so mm -hmm. incredible, um, but two, certainly in the context of what our families are in spending across the board. So I'm not, I'm not saying it's not something we should be mindful of, but... Um, Again, um, I, I don't know when the, the music, um, you know, I, I'm sure our, our, our department head and stuff would have some feedback about um, pressure that it's putting on families and if there's anything that the community could do to support people to get the experience. Um, we certainly don't want it to be a hurdle that people can't participate. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the kids do some fundraising mm -hmm. for it on their own. Let's hold on. We'll hold off the yeah. boat. All right. I think we should. Okay. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just get, let's just get some answers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's my that's fault. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, correspondence. With, other. Uh, we have one more agenda out of this bit. Yeah. Oh. Zippity doo Sorry, I apologize. It didn't make the agenda. I know I emailed you all, but uh, we have our final. Um, I'm like I'm recommending that we um, take our final vote um, to. Um, Use a special ed reserve fund. So uh, we've we've talked so much about this this year, <laughs> but, um, but actually between uh, our last meeting and this meeting, we had a very successful uh, meeting with the board of selectmen mm -hmm. to answer really just a small handful of questions about the reserve fund. And I, 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 I think every I don't know if there everybody there. I'm I was you were there, yeah. but um, I think we're. Very clear that night that that four hundred thousand dollars really was four hundred thousand dollars, and 
it was a budget off, it was a revenue offset that we we needed. So um, we've been saying that all all budget season. But let me just one one small point though is as part of that conversation with the board, um, this thirteen thousand uh, dollars of of kind of uh, un. Uh, unspent circuit breaker reimbursement from like several fiscal years ago was kind of unearthed. Um, it wasn't an account that we had access to. So they asked us, well, shouldn't, shouldn't you use that first? And we said, absolutely, we should use that first. Um, so we, we've since done that. We've applied um, invoices to that, to that $13,000. So this amount of money I'm recommending tonight, which is $89,332.29, that actually um, if you consider the last two we've done, there was one that was a little over 221,000. The second one was 75,000, almost 76,000. This amount, 89, actually leaves $13,000 on the table in the special ed reserve fund. Um, excuse me, special ed stabilization fund, which I'm totally comfortable with. And it just, if you consider that $13,000 being sort of ex extra money, I can make the argument that we should leave it in the spent stabilization fund and just build a, I know it's not a lot of money, but why, I say why not? And so my recommendation tonight, um, that would take the full amount that we used this year in fiscal year 18 to um, 386,643. Right. I just wanted to kind of bring, make sure I, I explain that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I can I just ask a clarifying question? Um, we had um, turned back to the town at the end of fiscal 17, uh, 131,000, which the town meeting authorized being put into the sped stabilization. So the balance will be 144, right? Essentially, mm -hmm. is 131 anticipated in our fiscal 19 budget is that a budget call it a revenue offset in and out yep okay yep. so and let's let's just make sure yep. that that's clear that that we also envision spending 131,000 hopefully we'll have an opportunity to prepay some sped stabilization mm -hmm. or maybe there'll be mm -hmm. some additional funds yeah. don't know the status yet but um, just for clarity's sake, yeah. that's um, we still haven't really built up a true stabilization no. fund. No. We're still relying upon it for our operating yeah. uh, budget. For and next you, you know, I thought we had a good conversation actually at the slug You made that about very that. clear. We, we, we spent Great. some time on that, and Excellent. I just to listen. In, 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 in a, the spent stabilization was a wonderful idea. It's just that for this year and next year, it's not really a stabilization okay, fund. Good. It's a revenue Excellent. offset. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get to a point where we actually have money in that account to be able to use for right. unanticipated expenses. But I think there was a good understanding uh, about that. I also, by the way, made that point on town meeting floor because <laughs> it's it's built into the budget, yeah. you know, at truly as a revenue offset. Uh, so, Super. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't want to be a stickler, but I think this topic has been so hotly debated and in the clipper and it's not on our agenda so no. i do feel a bit uncomfortable taking a vote on this tonight oh. i think it should be noticed um, that's that's fair you mean notice so it's on the agenda yeah it should posted? be on the agenda okay yeah, for public meeting law can we can we delay then the vote put the vote in the Is next that meeting cause an issue i mean our what uh, when would select to vote on it? Um, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a violation of the open meeting law. It's not. I mean, you can you can add agenda items, but I, I hear you though, just from an optic in optics or just mm. a, just a process standpoint. I say if if there's if there's a discomfort, let's just we wait and we'll deal with the consequences of waiting. I mean, it's you know we'll have to kind of make sure we close up the fiscal year. Um, so can we put it on the June sixth agenda? We have a scheduled meeting on June sixth. Yeah. 6th? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Is that that's okay with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's a good, I think that's a good point, Jan. Yeah. Yeah. So it's posted. Yeah. yeah. We, we just, also have a meeting next week, which is a public meeting, right? Right. On the 23rd. A retreat, yeah. A retreat. But it is a public meeting. Right. So if you need a decision in a public meeting earlier than June 6th, there's that option. I, I think, I think it would we'll be, be okay. I think waiting till June six would be that, that's, next that's scheduled up to, meeting. Yeah, I just I, think I, I just think right. optically, I think we need to. Yeah, I would wait till June six if we could too. Okay. I, I agree. With, actually, Shannon, I think you make a great point. I will say though mm -hmm. that it, it I don't really think it's an issue. I think there's a full understanding from the board of selectmen and the town administrator and us about the intent of that money. 
why it got covered that night and why it blew up, um, it just, it's unfortunate. Uh, but be, because it was unfortunate, I think, I think yeah, it's smart. It's uh, it yeah. smart, yeah. 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 But I, I, I will say, I don't think there's any, and you guys were there. I mean, I don't think there's any question about what we're talking about. No, was, the point. understanding was we were going to spend the rest of the money and spend the 13 first. And are you? But now we're spending the 13, but we're leaving 13, 357. So that leaves me confused. Because we're spending 13 from another fund. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I mean, you could, it, yeah. So, so then it, this 13 goes into the money yeah. from, it, yeah. yeah it's so it's next year's money. Small little. For taking it out of another drawer. So. Yeah. So you're getting your 400 and all from school. Exactly. Yeah. So are, are, would you say that all the accounting processes are now in place? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So basically all, all it is is that, um, again, these are known kids with known tuitions, right? So yeah. they, it's just that we're charging them to the op our operating budget. We're effectively running the operating right. budget in deficit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once once the vote officially happens, it's just a, it's literally a journal. It's a journal. Fine. Action. It's, okay. Yeah, it's, okay. Okay. I think it's I think it's a great point. Yeah. And is there um, or do you think that it's worthwhile keeping track of um, uh, for a school committee to keep its eye uh, on a periodic basis on the balances in the special education stabilization fund versus circuit breaker revolving funds as yeah. can that be a periodic discussion topic or yeah. just well, that yeah. a notification yeah 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 we've uh, yes just yeah. so that's that we quarterly update yeah, yeah. so that we I mean, Instead of like a budget, that's why I kind of wanted the budget item on the agenda. But we could yeah. have it. We could have it be specific. Well, it's kind of separate from the budget. I mean, circuit breaker is part of the, the budget, and and as such, we don't. School committee doesn't have a role in dictating when you use circuit breaker and when you don't. But but the two things are interwoven. Yeah. So um, here's so, the thing. There's a lot of there's a uh, let me think about that because okay. there's a lot of. Um, a lot of transactions, right? Sure. And it, it really, and I, I, I have to think about a way to keep, kind of keep track or just keep it in the public realm, but it really, I, I want to, in a way, simplify it, right? We, yeah. we build a budget, the revenue offsets is clear as day, right? So a circuit breaker next year is $800,000. Mm. It really, in an ideal world, I mean, if, and if we could do this, right, we're going to do it. In an ideal world, we were literally just one time throughout the year, yeah. make a journal entry for 800. I mean, it, it is truly a revenue offset, right? right? So in a way, it's not like we're necessarily chipping away at it all year. Uh, but let me think about that just so okay. we kind of keep it keep it in the uh, in front of us. Yeah, I think yeah. it might be wise yeah. to do that just but. as an information, a point of information yeah. on a periodic basis. OK. I had a, a couple of other items under issues for consideration at future meetings. Just looking back over our um, agenda calendar for the current school year, and I know that Dr. Antonucci, you weren't here when we created this agenda calendar, so it's um, perhaps unfair to hold you to it, but there are a couple of items that we haven't addressed yet, and I'm wondering um, what we might be doing with regard to such things as the strategic plan um, because every year in the, towards the end of the school year, we have a, a strategic plan update or a review or whatever you want to call it. And, and so I don't know if we want to do that because we're kind of carrying over an old strategic plan, but at some point we do need to talk about a strategic plan, I su suspect. Um, we also typically have a CPAC come in I think they're on deck for our June Are they? 6th. Great, okay. Um, and then we've already talked about the superintendent evaluation. We also often have a, an annual report from the guidance department, so I'm wondering. June 6th. Okay, yep. great. Yep, Lisa DeMossi is also. Great. Um, and then uh, there was one item hanging on. Uh, there was a, ch uh, a request from a member of the community to review our policy regarding high school walkouts. And so I thought that we could do that briefly at some point. Um, well, we don't have a policy on walkouts. We don't. No, I know, but we have a, um, it, to review that particular walkout, 
for that event and identify whether it meets with existing policy, whether there are any issues arising that might um, necessitate a policy alteration, um, whether everybody's happy with it. You know, just I think a public discussion might put that to bed. I mean, it's up to you guys. Um, my opinion was there, the only um, policy we have pertains to teachers not um, utilizing school time, school um, letterhead students for when they are running for their own public office. We don't have any other sort of policy. Um, well, we have a freedom it, of speech. It's, kind an, of it's in my opinion that in, it's my opinion that in no way did the student walk out. Um, have any impact on any policies that we have, nor do we need to create a policy around okay. it. Okay. But that's my opinion. If you all want to put it on the agenda and talk about it. I mean, we don't... It was a nationwide event. I think the principals were... I think Jim Donovan was masterful with the way he handled it. Um, you know, it was 18 minutes. Any class missed class time, cutting classes, if you missed 20 minutes of a class or more, it covered two different class periods. Um, there was one student who gave a speech. Students were not, you know, could have attended or not attended. There were students, uh, my daughter did attend. She said there were students standing there with signs for the Second Amendment. Um, nobody was forced to go. Um, I don't know, I just don't think we need to revisit it, but that's my opinion. Well, the question I had, um, and I don't know if you want to talk about it or just communicate the question to Mr. Donovan, is that is the precedent that was set with this event useful in the future in the context of other, other student um, initiatives? That's the only question. My, my sense is from all uh, is that it what happened in this particular event conformed with our policy that the priority was on the orderly operation of the school, which is part of our policy um, and that the students didn't distribute information on a public sidewalk and that's another item in our policy but I do think that it's worth asking the administration is what you did with this particular protest, is is that gonna put you in a, a good position in another context mm -hmm. with another type of protest? And if not, then maybe some yeah, consideration. She will probably be here in June, we can. Yeah, I don't, I mean, that's the only. One, 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 I, think, I think the answer is yeah, I mean, I, by the way, it, it was a walkout, right? I mean, so it's just amazing that our kids actually asked us to, yeah. you know, and, and informed us about it, right? So. That's a safe and orderly part, right? Right. No, and I think that, that it sounded to me that the, the concern from this member of the community was that that this type of behavior, student behavior, wouldn't be supported if it had been presenting another point of view. Mm -hmm. And so that's a legitimate question to ask. You know, had the, had, in the future, if another point of view is presented by the students, could the administration accommodate it in the same way that they accommodated this particular point of view? Was that and if the, the question that he raised? That was one of them. Okay. I, I was under I was under the impression that the point he was making was that because the walkout happened around a particular point of view, would we intentionally create an opportunity? For them to walk out yeah. to talk about the alternate point of view. That's sort of what I got from his feedback, not necessarily like what you just said. Well, I created a question out of what I understood him to be concerned about, and I understood his concern to be that the that the administration was supporting the walkout because it supported the political point of view right. of the students, and. I'm not sure that that's an accurate assertion to make. Mm -hmm. um, but so then, in order to challenge that assertion, you'd say, okay, well, would the administration support an alter a different student mm -hmm. walkout with mm -hmm. a different political perspective in the future in the same kind of cooperative, collaborative way? And if the answer to that question is yes, 
then there is no political bias mm -hmm. on the part of the administration. It's simply facilitating <clears throat> students doing something in the least kind of disruptive way possible. I, you know, my, <coughs> just my, my um, I think the policy question's a good one, but this is, in my mind, a really poor example because it was clearly nationally organized by students. It was nationally sure. coordinated. My sense of the question was, was the faculty and or endorsing and or supporting yes. and or organizing? Um, I think I think it was very clear. I would like to just have all of us review the policy. What I would recommend, because uh, I'm not I'm not current on what our policy mm -hmm. is. I think it would be beneficial to send it around, and if if each of us felt there were issues in the policy that should be rectified, I think we should raise it with the chair and say, could this be on a future agenda item? Because I'm not really prepared at this point to say whether it should be or shouldn't be. But I think the case of raising the objection in the context of this particular protest um, raises broader question, but clearly this was student-led, student sure. initiative, and it was not faculty endorsed, faculty promoted, police promoted, et cetera. There was, I think, an effort to make sure the students were safe. Um, but you can imagine if our students, and it's been, we're having this conversation because it hasn't happened very often, maybe students will become more politically active and more engaged. So I think in an optimistic way, this is something that we should consider about uh, consider um, w you know what are what are the policies of the schools and are they appropriate in the context of maybe perhaps increased engagement of our students in the future um, because they certainly haven't been very engaged in terms of something like this in the past. I think certainly in my memory, John, I don't know in your time at Westwood if you if you experienced something like this before. Yeah, it's a new era. Yeah, hmm. so I, I think it, I, I think it's worth considering. I'd like to know where we are currently. I haven't researched Well, I can tell policy. you what the, the policies are. That's policy JI, which is, has to do with freedom of inquiry and expression versus the orderly operation of school. And policy AH-R, which has to do very specifically with distributing information on a public sidewalk adjacent to the school. Great. But those are the only two relevant policies. But I think there's underlying this particular objection around this event was the assumption that the administration could say no. Mm -hmm. And I think you know when you have a bunch of high school students coming in and saying, we want to join a national protest, I'm not sure that no is an alternative. Right, yeah. you know, I I think that Mr. Donovan was his choices were to say yes or to say yes, mm -hmm. and to try and manage it as uh, in the least disruptive way. Um, so that kind of assumption that Mr. Donovan might have been able to just say no, and I or in future to another protest that the students want. I mean, you you can't say no really. Um, and uh, it just becomes less dis uh, or more disruptive. Um, and you know, the other assumption that seemed to be made was that uh, our taxes are never used to address student behaviors um, that taxpayers don't generally condone or don't agree with. Well, you know, we pay for a student uh, school resource officer, we pay for guidance counselors, school psychologists. Uh, there are all sorts of supports that schools pay for to support or to address student behaviors that maybe some of us don't agree with or don't support or whatever. So uh, I, I'm not sure that that's worth, um, worth thinking too hard about the, the issue of taxpayer funds. But, um, but really it has to do with minimizing disruption and I think this particular instance that was achieved. So. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else have anything? No. Um, no one else came, so no public comment. All right, we are going to adjourn for an executive session. You should probably just read the. Uh, okay. Uh, school committee will be going into executive session to discuss issues related to collective bargaining, bargaining and personnel, which will have a detrimental effect on the position of the governing body if the discussion were in open session. The board will not return to open session this evening.
Can I have a motion to adjourn to executive session? Roll call. Roll call. Okay. So moved. Second. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Jenna. Aye. 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 Okay. Open meeting adjourned. Thank you.